one. Since then, the game has been passed from generation to generation. You know, like me, I like to call it hooping, right? Yeah, it's become part of our childhoods, our culture, our country. You know, I still play a little bit. I got some skills. Tonight, wall. <laughs> I'm coming with the steal because a local woman and basketball broadcaster is making sure the stories of the game she loves and the women who shaped it come center court. Not that many years ago, girls and women were not allowed to play basketball. If not for them. Where'd it come from? I was having a conversation with Marcia Sharp, the legendary coach at Texas Tech a few years ago, that there were a lot of coaches that were in their retirement years and we were starting to lose their stories. Brenda Van Lingen is a renowned women's basketball broadcaster, a former college player and the daughter of a coach. You could say hoops and the history behind them are in her heart. When I really started looking at those that pave the way for us to have what we do today in women's basketball, what I have in my broadcasting career. It was very simple to say, if not for them, we wouldn't have what we do today. Years ago, she set out on a mission to preserve the legacy of the game she loves. My favorite was Miss Bessie talking about that photo on the front page yes. of the Washington Post. Yes. A big game on the Washington Bullets home court. And one of the reporters said to me, Coach, if you beat them, I'm going to put your girl's picture on the front page, sports page of the Washington Post. I said, buddy, it's going on there. There were women all over the country in, in places that were having experiences and winning, winning championships and doing things that, that were revolutionary. And there were people in other parts of the country that didn't know anything about it. Women like Sonia Hogg, longtime women's basketball coach at Louisiana Tech. You know, you never know what you're destined to do. If we were going to do it, we were going to do it right. And uh, that was my vision. That was her vision for the game, that we play hard, that the game would grow. I always called her the first lady of women's basketball. Even though they endured criticism, discrimination, racism, homophobia, so many things that they had to battle against, they still pushed through because they knew it was the right thing to do. Brenda is sharing a small preview of If Not For Them at the Women's Final Four in Dallas this Thursday, the same state where the fight for Title IX was won. How kismet is this moment going to be for you? <sighs> uh, I'm, I'm so excited about it. It really kind of makes me emotional because, um, these are the hidden figures of women's basketball, of women's sports, of women's leadership. By standing up for what was right when it wasn't the popular thing to do, they changed our world. What do you hope the feeling is in the room? I hope the feeling in the room is celebration that they can look back and think, we did that. And did that indeed. It's almost as if we were reflecting on standing on the shoulders of giants. That was an awesome story, an awesome reflection. More than 100 women were interviewed for this series, and a special screening again is running this Thursday in Dallas at the Women's Final Four. And Brenda tells me they're still looking for a big funder to complete this project. Awesome.